<laughs> Gotta grab the popsicle sips real quick. I'm gonna throw it out there. Yesterday, uh, I did drop off the books, which you guys are seeing right here. They're all 100% completely signed. The first 1,000 books, yes, you guys are actually probably seeing this and you probably have already received them. So I wanna say thank you once again for ordering the book. And it is still available if you guys would like to go grab one and my family would very much so appreciate it. It's on Amazon, just search Never Fear Anything. Just a bunch of military stories and uh, what I did afterwards, the effects of like, I guess what PTSD does to your mind. I don't know, it's, it's kind of a, it's an interesting ending to a story, I think personally. And some, some good war stories that are pretty vivid. Anyway, today's the day. We got, we got, a, um, we got a different rifle today. The uh, last time I was out with a 300 Win Mag, I am fully not a fan of a straight carbon fire barrel. So we had to bring out the six and a half, and we're gonna get that thing, because we have a hunt coming up. It's very important. I also wanna throw it out there, Steven does not live with me. Doesn't live with me whatsoever, just kinda, you know, he lives by himself at his own place. We got a full value wind today. I would assume it's probably blowing probably like a steady five to seven, then it probably gusts between uh, 12 and 15, somewhere around there, maybe seven, seven, eight, steady. I don't know, it's blowing from right to left, like legit full value. The only issues that you have when you guys are, when you guys come to shoot, and a full value wind's not a huge deal if it's just a flat, straight, just like flat land. Like right now you guys can see it's gusting right now. That's not a big deal when you're like that, but when you get like hills and valleys in between your targets, that wind will change like a, like crazy from like where you're at to where your target is. And you guys don't really need to care about as much of what the wind's blowing here, it's what it's blowing down there. That's what really matters. In between your round and the target, like midway is a pretty big deal, but the biggest deal is like what the wind is doing like legitimately at the target. Cause your bullet lost a lot of velocity and you know what I mean? Wind has more effect. So. I'm sure a lot of you guys knew that. Just throw it out there for the new ones, new guys, new, new guys or gals. Um, I'm gonna confirm zero with my six and a half. We did bring another camera today so you guys can see the impact on targets and so on and so forth because in, in previous videos we weren't doing that but I, I think it's very imperative you guys see impact as well as, as when I do. Okay. He hold the one on the left, huh? You're shooting left. So a lot of people at home are probably used to like the traditional way, shoot three rounds, come down, look. I feel like I've done this like so much over the like my lifetime. Like I'm not just saying that just because I'm on YouTube saying this. I like I feel like I've shot so much that I can quickly make the adjustments when I'm like shooting quick and I know exactly what I'm doing. Like if I know I pulled a bad shot, I, I I don't have an ego where I'm like, nah, I didn't pull a bad shot. No, nah, I know what I'm doing. No, I know when I pull. That's a pulled shot right there. That one 100% was a pull. I once I figured out what was going on, like down here, I was like, okay, cool. So I went over to these these targets and I was shooting left, as you guys can see here. So I shot again, still shooting left. Shot again, still shooting left. So basically, you guys can imagine that's a three 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 group right there. Every single one is touching that left-hand side. So we made somewhat of an adjustment, and this is all within the scope. I'm looking at, because right now I'm using a scope that I, I understand very much more than like that last one I was using, which was MRAD. And made the adjustment to the scope, and it, it brought the round over, made a little bit more of an adjustment, and there's where we were. So I was like, okay, cool. So I dialed, then I dialed to make, to make my correction, and then we end up over here, because then I held center mass, dialed again, and now we're sitting around here, which I am, 100% comfortable with and I'm good good to go. I'm just when I come out here to group and zero and check stuff on a gun I think I think that's pretty I'm thinking I'm good to go now. It's time for some real fun wind call shots Actually, we'll just leave this here for now. I don't need to play like that. What are we doing? Steve? Totally different this time. We got quarter minute adjustments within the scope Not 10 MRADs. Not a big fan of MRADs Ten. so I have the actuals written down from last time this wind is kicking this you want to know what it's actually kicking? Oh, my Kestrel's inside. 310, 380, 580, 650, 750, 810. That's what we're going to roll with for distances. I'm just going to, we're literally just going to roll with it. You want to see what the wind's kicking? 
Uh, I've got a Kestrel. I need to know legitimately what the wind is. What'd I say, a steady five? So earlier, what'd I say? Five to seven, I think. There's a gust. So gust up to 10 so far is that we're getting. With a steady five to eight. Right to left full value. Yep, gust of 10. We got a five to eight steady with a gust of 10. It's not terrible. When it gets really tough is when you're in like the teens. Like 14, 13, 15. We should, we'll be able to make easy adjustments on this. Wind. Make sure I write this down. So important when you guys are doing one of these, uh, getting your dope. Wind is so important. See, we got a medium wind right now, seven miles an hour. You got to make sure you do that. And a heavy wind, of course, is in the teens. Well, we're going to make note at the very top, or excuse me, down here in the remarks. We'll make a note in the remarks. Five, what did I say, five to seven? Yeah. Steady or five to eight? Five to seven. Five to eight. Five to eight, steady. Gust to ten. So you guys understand on your your windage calls are always that you gotta make sure you write these notes down for your when you're trying to get your dope. You, you need to always remember that because you're gonna forget. See, there's a gust of ten right there. You don't want to shoot on the gust of ten clearly, but you might want to hold like right edge of the target for your wind call. Nipple, right nipple. All right. Call is important. I know exactly where I aimed. I aimed down low here to check. It's good. And then I aimed center mass and it hit. You guys got to realize, you guys don't have to be like super professional when you're doing this either. Well, not from like my standpoint. Like you want to, like a lot of you guys may be looking at the target like, oh my God, he just hit neck. He just hit bottom stomach and he just hit nipple. It's like, no, that's exactly where I was aiming. I was just making sure. You got to call your shot. Like you got to be like honest with yourself. Like I knew where I was aiming. I knew where I impacted. Like, see, look, one dot, two down here, three. Literally just checking to make sure. Three rounds on a target at 310. You shouldn't be missing in the first place, but... That's what you want. Three plus one's our goal right there. That's good. Wind is zero. See what I mean? At th at so that's another thing. I didn't do hold off whatsoever. I didn't hold right edge of that target or nothing. At 300 yards, they even all that value of wind does not do nothing to this bullet. Now let's move out to 380 is what I think is where it is. So we're probably gonna go to four. I'm gonna go to four. I'm just gonna minus one for right now. Four minus one. One, two, three, four, five. All I can all I can see on this target is nipples up. So I'm basically gonna have to go for like a headshot. Hit <laughs> right in the deck. Alright. Feels good. I love I love that. Love that. That that one right there, that one is good. I have <laughs> there's a there's like a little bush. That's covering half the target like here, here down. That's all I could see was like this and up. I could send another one if you want me to. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Because that four minus two was, I mean, that was, that was a perfect call. That's like dead on, dead nuts. <laughs> Dude, you're going to laugh what I just did. Oh, you can't see through my scope. I'm not going to show you. I can't, I can't show you guys. Dang it. I oh, oh geez. See the bush? Yeah, <laughs> that's crazy. Yeah. That bush is literally like a foot tall, but it's it takes up almost all of the target. It's 50 yards in front of us. <laughs> <laughs> that should be 580. I'm gonna hold right edge of the target this time though with the wind. All right, you ready? The winds down there don't look terrible. No, it's not really moving much. Tell me whenever you're ready. I'm good. No, you're good. Left cactus. Left cactus. Okay. Yeah. So it it it, it did push it significant. All right. Input. I see. Yep. Good call. Good call. I'm holding an entire minute right. Right now, mm -hmm. I can actually probably do. I bet you if I do a minute and a half. Oh, spicy angle. Oh, good angle. There we go. I'm gonna hold a minute and a half right real quick and see what that does. Cause I'm pretty sure a minute and a half right is going to. Almost be center. So I'm gonna go ahead and do you guys a favor. Just imagine there's a target uh, silhouette. I was taking the 
hash mark that has the red arrow on it right now, which you guys can see there's 10 uh, minutes left, 10 minutes right, 10 minutes up, 10 minutes down. And each little one is one and the big one is five. You can cut them in half, they can be half half minutes and all this, that doesn't really matter. Anyway, I was taking the reticle and I was holding it one minute on the right edge of the target as if it was facing me. So when the wind comes, it's pushing the round this way, okay? So I was holding, I was literally doing a hold off. I don't ever, like literally, I'll probably never use this dial ever again in my life. And while I'm using this gun at least, I never adjust for windage, I just do hold off. So um, I was holding one minute right edge of the target. So when the round came in, you guys will see it's, it's impacting on this side of the target. There's a couple right here, but it's generally, it's in a very good, good area of the target that you would need to hit your animal. It's good to go. All right, next, just wanted to show you guys as having like an actual visual. That was 580. 580 is good at four. No, 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 six minus two. Uh, it's good, like I said, mental note, you guys gotta notice medium to heavy wind, um, right to left. You gotta put that in your remarks, same as, 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 as you would before. And then you gotta say, held right edge one minute. Yeah, I'm gonna hold the right side again. Okay, so that was too much. That's, that's three shots. Back. Nine rounds. No, eight rounds. Nine rounds. This is a pretend round, but we'll go in there. It's low capacity. 750. So these are my notes just for, for that one. Dude, it's like that the target is not very big. <sighs> you know, I mean we're talking like the round is going from here and it's just going like this. It's just losing. It's like I saw, I saw the last one. The last Did one. you? Yeah. It's like this. But I mean we've got a couple that are like right here and I got one that's up here. I mean we're we're good. And and the thing is we're like I, I'm doing it quick. I'm not the type of guy that I don't like going sitting at a range on like a shooting bench with like a machine holding my gun just like you know what how how now nah, this is like quick so it's like round shot and you see the impact give it like two seconds to be able to make the correction and then hit your target i think you're good because because honestly like the whole one the snipers one shot one shoot one shot one, one blah, 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 blah. hold on one shot one kill is not actually like what any of us actually think it's one shot and a good correction at these kind of distances with wins one shot and a good correction your money Hold two minutes right out the gate. Just gonna give it a send because I know it's pretty much gonna be somewhat close. That was low. That was low on the target though, right? I heard ding. I think it was low target and then I it see just flashed ground. No, nope, right? I see it. It's bottom left hand side. Right, then... I need to come up one. Alright, started at two. Started at two, ended at four. If I really wanted to be a turd burglar, that means I can just dial four minutes right, correct? Now I should be able to hold quote unquote center mass, right? Dude, I'm telling you that wind is ripping out there. That ended up being a five minute hold at 810. One round. Just because I want to do it. I feel confident. Yeah. Okay, so this is 750 out. I think we shot six rounds at it. We got three impacts, but you guys can see there should be some. I mean, you got to see how big this target is. Look how big this target is. At 750 yards away, that's not. That's not terrible at all. Usually at 750, they'll have like a bigger one for you to adjust on and then you can shoot one of these. But that's not too bad right there. Let's go to 800, 810, 810. This one tells the story a little bit better. You guys, we were talking about the rounds were coming in. They looked like they were going. There's one, two, three, four, 
this is the one where I went, remember, we hit down here and it was like eight plus one. And I was like, now nah, we gotta go up one more. And then we started connecting a little bit higher. That's just off one adjustment. I mean, that's... We were sitting as far back as you can see on that back hill over there. But it goes down, comes back up, it goes back down, it comes back up, it goes back down, it comes back up. We're talking all the way through here, that wind was changing the entire way. And it pushed enough to where I was like, what, a four and a half, five mils right? So my, my crosshairs were probably, literally probably right here. This is where my crosshairs were. My mills were like right here. I was holding like right here with them with four, four and a half minutes or so, right here. And this is like, as you guys can see, there's legitimately the adjustment. This is where my crosshairs, this is where my mills were, my minutes. This is where I was holding. That round would go from where I would aim was over here and it go. There you go. So Steve's gonna have a task. We've got eight, we've got eight honey buns. I'm talking eight solid crispy, they're not crispy, they're really juicy actually. So we've got eight of these. He's gotta go and he's gotta create a habitat to catch Ricky. So here's eight. That's eight dollars worth of honey buns. I broke the bank on that one. <laughs> So now it's up to you. Alright, I got this. It'll be do. Oh, do you? Yeah. Alright, we made it over to the house. Let's go find these traps, huh? I think. Oh, here we go. Yeah, we got one back here. And I think we got one inside. Oh, no. They're both right here. Cool. Alright, so I'm going to build a little... It's like a little fort house thing for him. Honestly, it's kind of hard not to eat these honey buns. He's got eight of them. Pretty sure if one goes missing, we'll be fine. But... I don't know, we'll see. Alrighty, I'm just gonna throw this guy. There we go. Now he's in the back. Alright, so I threw some here in the back of the cages. Got a honey bun in there, honey bun in there. I'm gonna spread a little bit more around. But you know, there's a lot of work setting up these traps and I got a little hungry. So. Hopefully, Rob, you're not watching the video. If not, I owe you a dollar for the honey buns. My bad. But we got like five more. <laughs> it's all good. But I'm gonna build. Uh, I'm gonna build some wood and house stuff thing going on. But they should be pretty used to seeing all the wood around here. See what I mean? There's just wood everywhere. So I'm thinking, if we cover it and then just throw the honey buns around, not this one. This is mine. We should be able to get them. All right, so I'm gonna add a few more pieces of wood to this, um, just kind of covering it up, and then throw a little bit more honey buns all the way around here. But this should be just about good. I'm gonna take a trail cam, I'm thinking maybe right about here. Yep, right there. That way it can capture anything that's coming in here, and we'll see exactly what happens when they come in. But uh, let's go see what, the, let's see what Rob's up to. Okay, doing a little bit of cleaning action. I almost spilt my uh, board cleaner. So I know a lot of you guys are probably asking what I actually, you know I'd be asking, some of you guys are probably wondering, would I actually take a shot on an animal out at 800 yards? I'm sure there's a comment down below right now currently saying, you're an idiot if you would take a shot at 800 yards. Hey, if the conditions were correct, like the wind was correct, like everything laid out and was, it, it was gonna be, be favorable for me to take a shot on an animal at that distance, I would actually 100% and confidently take that shot. Um, I'm gonna, but I, I'm, I'm thinking my next time I maybe might, maybe possibly 400 max, maybe 300, maybe four or 500, I don't know, something around there. And that kind of a shot with that rifle back over there should be nothing more than a chip shot if conditions are favorable and pretty much like good. I'm not, I'm not gonna take a shot on anything that I don't think we're, it's gonna be my favor, clearly. That would be not very smart, but I do have to finish, I do have to finish something, like today. I got the pants, the pants are not done. I did get this done. Well, kinda done, I still gotta clip it and paint it and do that kind of stuff. I gotta clip this little excess off that's right there, but it's all sewed up and it took me about three hours to do this, but towards the end, of course towards the end I actually, I figured it out and I was like, like Martha Stewart. No, that wasn't Martha. Yeah, Martha Stewart. I thought it was about to say Betty Crocker. I gotta knock this out real quick. Tito's! Dang it! We have no Tito's. I can't sew without Tito. So we're actually about six hours into probably just sewing each one of these little stitches on by hand now. 
onto the back of this thing and and it actually turned out very very good and ironically enough Sarah's like you know what it's kind of funny is you actually did better job on this one than you did the last one well I mean this is my second one and I think as I've gotten older I've got a lot more patient just just a tad bit but see uh I've gotta gotta make those little shiny spots all over the thing we gotta hit them with this and then I also have to hit each one of these with well with some of this right here See, you can see each one of them. This is when what we call a ghillie wash needs to be coming into effect because it takes away all that shininess. I'm telling you guys right now, the amount of work that goes into one of these suits is just, oh, I know I, oh, but it's starting to look pretty good. It's actually looking half decent. It's looking like it's almost a complete ghillie suit. We still got to trim some stuff off. All this shininess that's on the back, I still got to trim a little bit of that off right there. But it is, we got to put some, uh, burlap so we can put some jute on there as well and this thing is going to be 100% done but we got a all those little shiny parts I don't even know why I'm trying to make this thing like super super legit should I give this no I can't give this away I spent way too much time on this thing way too much time <coughs> okay 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 hey end of this video I love you guys thanks for hanging out with me I'm gonna go Hang out with that little one for the next hour or so before we have to scrub dub dub in the tub and then put her to bed. I love you guys. Thanks for hanging out with me. You guys know tomorrow could be the day. I'm, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You wanna say bye bye? You wanna say bye bye to everybody? No? No, no bye. Okay. Okay, we'll, we'll do. So you guys know the deal. Click that video right there to send that one. Then hey, click the one right below if you haven't already. Subscribe right down there to Two Lemon Pieces. I love every single one of you. Thanks for hanging. Yeah, go check out yesterday's video, by the way.